Hi, and welcome to the Servo Air Training. My name is Jamie, a respiratory therapist here at Gettinga. Now we'll go through the Servo Air ventilator. Remember, not every option might be on your Servo Air. The Servo Air is a turbine driven vent independent of wall gas source. Here is the inspiratory outlet and the expiratory inlet. Underneath, you'll see where aerogen connection is. The screen will also lay completely flat for better transportability. Now let's start with the back of the ventilator. Plug in your power cord and your O2 hose. Make sure your air inlet filter is connected. Located down here are your two battery packs. The bottom one needs to be plugged in at all times, and the second one is interchangeable to be used on transport, each lasting 120 minutes apiece. To turn the ventilator on, pull down the toggle switch and push it to the side. Let's start with the pre-use check. First, touch yes in order to activate it. Once it directs you, it will show you illustrations using your test tube to connect between the inspiratory and expiratory outlet. Once that's completed, hit OK to start the testing. The pre-use check includes test and measurements, including flow and pressure transducer calibrations. During the battery switch test, unplug the power cord. For the patient circuit test, connect the circuit that you are going to use, including all accessories for your patient. If active humidification is used, make sure that there is water in your chamber. If needed, you can skip this step and perform it right before going on your patient. Disconnect your test tube and connect your circuit. Then hit OK in order to start the calibration. Unblock the tube and press OK. Your pre-use check is then complete. Starting with the standby screen, select your patient type, whether they're pediatric or adult, followed by the ventilation type, non-invasive or invasive. Your modes are lo located here, the top ones being anything control, your middle two are your interactive modes, at the bottom are supported modes, with your high flow at the very end. Select patient data, put in their gender and their height in order to do predicted body weight. Your patient mode is up here with your settings at the bottom. On the right are your measured values. Touch the arrow to open up your advanced settings. Touch a setting. To make changes, you can slide along the bar or add and subtract. When you move beyond the default, the scale will turn yellow, alerting you. Press the plus sign if you would like to go beyond that. At the top are your modes. If you touch it, it will bring up all of your settings. When you're making changes, some will have contextual diagrams to show you. You can also touch the eye, which will give you information about that setting. Once you have your setting and you've confirmed all of them, hit accept. To silence the alarms, touch the alarm bell and a two minute countdown will begin. You will see they're indicated both here as well as the top as well as the light flashing, which can be seen complete 360. Red being a high priority alarm and yellow being a medium priority alarm. In order to make an adjustment, touch whatever is alarming. You can see it's the low alarm limit. You can pull that down or you can add and subtract and check mark to confirm. Same thing with anything that's flashing yellow. It's our low alarm you can pull it down or subtract and check mark to confirm. Your alarms are located 
underneath your tab entitled Alarms. When you touch it, it will bring up all alarms that are available in that mode. The top being anything high and the bottom being anything low. To make adjustments, touch that alarm and pull down or add and subtract. Once they're configured like you would like them, hit accept. There is also an auto set feature available in control modes of ventilation for the alarms. They will set the upper and lower alarm limits based on what your patient is currently doing. It is located here and the ventilator will make the adjustment. If you're happy, you then hit accept. Now let's look how to determine your patient triggering the ventilator. At the top side, you'll see lungs indicating a trigger. You'll also see a white deflection on your flow scaler. If you would like to change to a pressure trigger, go to your mode and to your trigger setting. Here, you can then slide over to the pressure side, indicating more patient effort, and check mark to confirm. Now, you will see the deflection on the pressure scaler. Because we put in the patient information at the beginning, the vent will now look at mils per kilo of predicted body weight, breath by breath. This is indicated down here. When adjusting the volume, you'll notice your set volume followed by mils per kilo. If you'd like to adjust for a lung protective strategy, you may do this here and then hit your check mark to confirm. The O2 boost is located down here. To activate, touch and hold till the blue bar goes across. It will give you a minute's worth of that O2 and silence your alarms for a minute. If you would like to cancel, hit your X and it will cancel both at the same time. If you'd like to adjust that, go to your maneuvers and select O2 boost level. Currently, you can see it is locked into 100%. You can unlock it and adjust this to whatever you would like. When you hit the check mark, it will then set your O2 boost at that amount above your set FiO2. As you change your oxygen, your O2 boost level will automatically change. Your inspiratory and expiratory hold are located underneath your maneuvers tab. Touch your maneuvers and select static measurements. This is where you can get measured values based on these holds. To activate an inspiratory hold, touch and hold till it beeps and says active for a second or two, followed by an expiratory hold till it beeps and says active. Your numbers will appear, including your total PEEP, your plateau pressure, and your static compliance. So under your eye is the values. You can scroll to get the definitions of all the values which are measured underneath your measurements. Aerogen technology is built into every single ventilator and is connected at the bottom. Select the maneuvers tab and go to nebulization. You can run it continuously or intermittently, choosing between 5 and 30 minutes. Check mark and hit accept, and you'll see the nebulization appear. To lock the screen, simply press the lock and hit lock screen. This will allow you to clean and use for transport without making changes. To unlock, Simply press and hold until the blue bar goes across. When disconnections needed, simply touch disconnect. It will pre-oxygenate for two minutes at that FiO2. Hit accept. Once the patient is disconnected, ventilation will pause, allowing you to disconnect them. Once you reconnect, Ventilation will resume and post-oxygenate. Remember, this is not to be used with closed suction. It is possible to record and save screenshots 
and recordings of your scalars. Down here, touch the camera in order to have a screenshot. Next to it is a record feature. It will record for 30 seconds, 15 seconds before and after you touch. Go to your library and see that your saved screens are located here and are different thumbnails on the bottom. When you go to the Recordings tab, your scalars are here and you can adjust, going to different ones. Up to 40 of each can be saved. In order to remove those and put them on a USB, take a blank USB and plug it into the back. Two USB ports are located here. Either can be used. Plug your USB stick into them in order to save your shots. Save them by going to your export and delete. You may select which ones you want and click export. All of that information will then be sent to that USB. Looking at the screen, you'll notice arrows with more information behind them. This arrow to touch will bring up advanced measured values. You can also change the way the screen looks. By looking at your Views tab, select the Advanced screen includes all of that information. Under the Basic tab, you'll notice there's only now one column. If I touch the arrow, all that information is there, it's just hidden. Looking again at your Views, you have a loop screen. Your loop screen will show your loops, which you can also have reference loops noted up here. Just touch to activate. When you look at your views again, there is a distance view. It will show you five basic measured values as well as your pressure and flow waveforms. When you look at your family screen, it's a more simplified view. You still have your settings and measured values. The bubbles indicate that ventilation is occurring. In order to get out of the screen, just touch. Your last and final view is Servo Compass. Servo Compass is a snapshot looking at volume and pressure based on your settings. The inside being volume and the outside being pressure. You set a targeted tidal volume in mils per kilo here, which can be adjusted, and a pressure, whether it be total or touch to change to driving pressure. As these change, they will go from blue to orange, indicating what your patient is doing. To go back to another screen, just hit your views. The servo compass is also in available in the other screens. If you touch and hold, a screen layout will appear. At the bottom, you'll notice a servo compass tile. This is also where you can fill and unfill your scalars. You will now note that the servo compass is available there. When looking at your trends, you can look anywhere from an hour up to 72 hours of time. As you move your cursor, your numbers that appear will be the numbers along that axis. Under here is an organized tab. In order to change the way that they are displayed, touch and drop to change the order. Red X to get out. High flow is located at the bottom of the screen. Touch and your settings will come up. Cancel and continue are down here. Remember, if you touch continue, it does stop ventilation to go into high flow therapy. To stop ventilation and go into standby, touch standby and then touch and hold stop ventilation till the blue bar goes across. Now you can switch into non-invasive ventilation if you would like. Thank you for watching. For more information, go to Genega.com.